In this case, there are a couple different mechanisms by which a GLP-1, such as semaglutide or terzepatide or retitrutide or any of the other ones that are going to be coming out soon, may help back pain. There's the obvious. Weight loss equals improved back pain for many reasons. Number one, mechanical, obviously. If you're carrying more weight, your body's going to be potentially leaning forward, which puts a little bit of torque on your low back. Might just be the overall general weight on it in a more axial load, so the compression effect. But also there's the kind of compensatory move. So if you're carrying excess weight, then by taking a GLP medication, that's going to allow you to, of course, relieve that excess weight and the mechanical effects of that one. Now, there's a really other interesting effect that we're noticing on GLPs, and, and there is some debate as to the extent of this that is independent of weight loss, but there seems to be an anti-inflammatory effect. Anecdotally, I've seen this in my patients a lot of times. They'll notice a couple weeks in, they haven't lost a ton of weight, yet suddenly they are noticing their aches and pains are getting better. Usually it's going to be kind of knee arthritis pains, maybe some back pain, and the research actually shows that closer connection with the arthritis, particularly on the knees, more than back pain related issues, but if the back pain is from arthritis of the facet joints or other inflammatory local things, then plausibly this should have a similar effect there too. Here's one that you probably have never heard of. Teriparatide is an analog of a hormone called parathyroid hormone. And the cool thing about this is we find that when you have certain cases of bony type pain, teriparatide actually may help that kind of pain. It's going to be a great complement to other therapies because it doesn't have any overlapping mechanisms. So A, there's a good complementary effect and B, you don't have to worry about doubling up on a pathway that's going to give you side effects. So it's not like taking, you know, uh, Celebrex and Aleve or something, two different NSAIDs or an NSAID and a steroid. Yeah, they may have some sort of additive benefit, but the negatives are going to far out with the positives there. In this case, with that PTH analog, that PTH type medication, you're going to essentially send calcium and things back into the bone and reinforce it. And that does seem to have a pain relieving effect there, which is really cool. And the other cool part about that too, is that if you had pain from lower bone density and maybe some kind of micro fractures in there, this will relieve that bone density issue to some extent. And by doing that, relieve the risk also to some extent of a secondary fracture. So you're not going to have as high of a risk of having a fracture in that bone, which would obviously be painful. So benefit there too. No, that one is not over the counter. It is prescription only. And maybe one of those things where it's worth discussing with your doctor with an open mind, because they may not have really thought of it for that purpose. It's one of those things that if you haven't heard of it that way, it might sound crazy until you think about it. It's like, eh, mechanistically, that kind of makes sense.